Hey people, here I am. It's Wednesday. We're just moving right along. Cheers, people. 20th of March. 20th. So, after sending off the CD yesterday to the person in Canada for the second time, um, I discovered that reinforcement um, does not bring the weight up on the package so much that it changes the um, the cost. So <clears throat> from here out, <clears throat> all CDs will come with um, in a package that's reinforced with cardboard. Apparently, I've been lucky so far to not have um, one second to not have. Oh, jeez. You know how the bathroom gets stuck sometimes. But apparently I've been lucky so far to not have more um, packages um, arrive damaged. So, like I said, I'll be adding a piece of reinforcement cardboard to all uh, CD um, packages. So hopefully I won't have that problem again. Also, I'm documenting that um, quite a while ago, someone saw me show a record, got a hold of me, expressed a personal connection to the record, and wanted to buy it. At first, I wasn't interested. They got a hold of me again, and I decided, okay, I will sell it. I'm just documenting. I'm about to go to the post office today to, to send this off to the person. It's not something I often do, but the person explained a personal connection to this record, and I don't have one. It was sent to me. To, uh, I won't real, reveal too much more, but I'm sending the record off. They paid a they paid a good a, they paid a good amount of money for it, so that's why I'm documenting it. I'm sending it out today. Hopefully there will be no problems with the mail. So folks, hope you're doing okay. So people are, <clears throat> well, people have been opening up to me on and off throughout the years anyway. And someone just, my latest um, comment on last video is a person's going through a rough patch. Music keeps them going. Their life is in the balance. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what the situation is with most people. There, There's a variety of reasons why people's lives may be in the shape that their lives are in. The thing that I understand personally, because my own <clears throat> um, tr troubles with mental illness and depression is that the biggest help that you can get is from yourself. There's no magic bullet. There are no magic pills. Psychedelics are not the answer. Of course, Ms. M. Tufel, um the intake of psychedelics is not to be taken lightly. I'm not taking anything lightly. People take drinking alcohol too lightly. There's no comparison, okay? Don't be worried about... See, people get worried, I think. You're worried. What's he saying? Is it irresponsible? It ain't no fucking irresponsible. It's you. It's you. You may have a chemical imbalance. You may have an electrical imbalance. <clears throat> it may be helped through therapy and um, medication and stuff. It might be. 
but I maintain that one of the biggest challenges is our negative mindset that is imprinted upon us in many ways in childhood. So there's a lot of issues that people are dealing with. That's why I say a lot of us, are the, the problem that we have is probably the same problem we'll have when we die. Maybe we'll get some um, something done with it. Maybe we won't. But you're worth it. Keep trying. And no one else has the answer for you. If you you need to you need to face that. <clears throat> Some people want to believe that they, there's a savior, that someone can save them. Well, something can happen where it seems like that's the case, but ultimately the help you have to receive it and accept whatever it is that helps you. It's not the other person. It's you. This is all just my opinion. So don't get bent. Don't get twisted. Okay. So my plan today is to take my stack. I actually have to get a box to put them in. I have a a, a fair amount of records to take down. I want to go take take them to the grapefruit. Homer's buys used records and CDs, but grapefruit, I usually do much better in trade down there as far as finding stuff that I want. Before I forget, I want to say this. <clears throat> You know, I don't advocate what you do except take care of yourself, okay? I'll say this much. The muse, number two, progress on the muse, number two, is on hold now because of freaking alcohol. Because someone has problems with alcohol. I'm leaving it there, okay? I don't have nothing good to say about alcohol. Don't keep it in the house. Don't like to drink when I go out. Don't like to be around people drinking. Okay. So, yesterday was another nice, wonderful, fairly low-stress day. A day of... um. Well, I'm retired, so shit, I can sit around and do nothing. And and then I can get up and do stuff. So I love it. You know, I love it. So, throughout the day, I casually listen to some music as well as watching some old... I'm really not watching movies all the way through. It's like I'll catch... Something will catch my interest and I'll watch a little bit of it. And my music news um, updates. You know, Steve Harley of Cockney Rebel passed away. I like them. I have one of their albums. Somebody's dying all the time. So what's down here? I got a big stack of records down here. Some I haven't played because I pulled them and I want to. Oh, yeah. Let me do this because it came up. Yeah, yeah, let me, there's so many records that I don't play that I never get to talk about. And one popped up yesterday, I said, let me talk about this. I don't know if I'll, I'll play it, but anyway, what is out that got played yesterday? Flower Traveling Band, the Japanese band. They have that album that is highly collectible called Satori. The lead singer of the band, it's a Japanese band, but the lead singer of the band is a black guy, Joe. And this album is stays in the collection, but it's not one I'm going to be listening to hardly ever. They do King Crimson's 21st Century Schizoid Man, and they do Black Sabbath's Black Sabbath on here. They do covers on here. And uh, it's interesting. And that's the, about the best I can give it. But it's a record. They're one of those bands that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, been interested in finding out about 
So when I able to grab them, I did. Satori is the one to get. That is a neat album. Boy, it's bright out. And it is, and winter is, I understand, officially over as of today, right? Winter is over. So this was stuck together with some other records in the I section that I pulled, and so I'm showing it. This is an original Raw Power by Iggy and the Stooges. It's got some ring wear, but it's completely original, and the record's in great shape. And this is this is a piece of history, as far as I'm concerned. It's not one that I listen to. It's historic. It's an important record. It got pulled because I was listening to some records out of the I section. This one, Icarus, um, from the 70s, Prague Rock. This is the shit. This is one of those really good records where I guess they were one and done. Somewhere in the... Somewhere around Van der Graaff Generator, there's horn involved. This is very good. Prog rock. It, it, it rocks as well. It has energy. G German. Yeah, I, I should have known that. I'm trying to see when this came out. It's in the 70s. 71. 1971. And I like that cover, too. Here's one that I have that I've saw the band. They were opening for someone else. I forget who they were opening for, who I went to see. I was extremely impressed. Wasn't expecting it. Terra Melos is the name of the band. Terra Melos Patagonian Rats. I had the guys sign my album. They basically defaced it. And I said, just whatever you want to do with the cover, go ahead. You guys really impressed me. Guitar, guitar led, but kind of math rocky, kind of like math rock, but it's Prague. It's modern day Prague. Also, it's kind of ugly green. That's ugly. I listened to two of the four sides of this yesterday and happy to say that I was not um, tripping when I saw them. What I heard is on the record, this is very good. Very good. Um, maybe something like Hella, Hella, uh, Zach, before he started um, Death Grips. This is good. Terra Melos. I guess they broke up already. I was going through stuff and pulling and playing and having fun. Here's an example of a record that I keep that's on the cheesy side, but because of its... It's White Noise. White Noise number three. David Voorhouse. He was part of the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. The White Noise album. I've got it over here. I can't see if I can grab it right quick, but that's that's really something. This isn't is interesting. I can't see it. I know it's just right here. This is kind of I love that cover. So again, record covers um, are important to me, and um, it's a combination. The music on here does try and fit this cover. It does in part, but there's parts where it gets sounds like Wendy Carlos, kind of. And uh, that's, you know, that stuff sounds dated, but isn't that a cool cover? Re-entry. Um, listen to the smile again. This is really this. I love this. They're, it's beautiful. Here's a record that I pulled the other day. Take it out. I'm I'm gonna trade this because it's new age. It's but no, this is really good. Ralph Illenberger, Illenberger Circle. On the Narada Equinox label. These are hit and miss. I bought this from a radio station, obviously. Not obviously, but you know, come from radio station. These records from this era, the late 80s, are real hit and miss. Some of this stuff is really treacly and, 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 and forgettable. This is beautiful. This is good. 
This is very good. And um, <clears throat> some of the records, um, anything else I played, I said, because I'm again going through the records that I bought still, so I don't need to show those again. I'm still playing them. But while I was in this section of the records, these are some records I haven't played. I don't even know if I've shown them. So here's another New Age album, Paul Griever, Joy. Once again, the cover was part of the um, appeal. Again, this one that it's good. It's a guitarist. These, you know, it's interesting. These two records actually might come from the same person, same station. But there's that. Here's a either, I think they're from New Zealand. Don't play this much, but it's a collector's item. The, gla the Great Unwashed. Clean out of our minds on Flying Nun. Flying Nun records out of New Zealand. Interesting label. Don't listen to the stuff much. I may have outgrown this stuff, but I'm holding on to it because these records are cool. There's something different about the vibe going on down there. This is kind of ramshackly, if I remember correctly. There's that. Here's one where I had it as a kid, found it as a cutout. It was too regular sounding for me, so I got rid of it. Years later, came across a copy of it, bought it back. You know, like that Green album. It, in a way, it fits. Great Jones. All bowed down on a small label, Tonsil Records. I have another record on this label. So this is, again, is another one where it's kind of like it's part of the archive. You know, last time I played this, I was looking for a good song on it. And there's good songs on it, but not for my taste. But it's a keeper. It's a keeper. Here's the one I was thinking about when I came across this. I, you know, I never play this, so I never get to show it. Let me show this. Here's another used record I got off of a radio station out of Kearney, Nebraska, of all places. The Great White Cane. Have you heard of this? Horn band out of the 70s. This is a um, gimmicky cover, die cut. The Great White Cane. Anybody look familiar on the album cover to you? That's Rick James. Rick James. You know who Rick James is, right? This album um, is pretty good. It's horn-based rocket rock. Early 70s. Rick is the primary writer, so it's pretty funky. But come on now. The Great White Cane. You know what they're referring to. Well, some people could say like they're doing with Trump. Well, he meant this. He sort of said that, but he probably meant this. We're talking about cocaine. And if you know anything about Rick James, and also if you know anything about the history of rock music and and entertainment and cocaine, that's exactly what it's talking about. Rick James has gotten to had a lot of problems with cocaine, bless him, like a lot of people. But that's one that I thought to myself, let me show that. It's a good it's a cool record to have. The other two things that got pulled. These are more things that I have, don't play much. Ping Pong. The George Growl Quintet on the Free Music Production label. This is an, an, a label that, again, whenever I come across these and I can afford it, I get it. Free Jazz label. High, high bar. High quality. This is some good stuff. And the last thing that got pulled from the G section is Gray Market Goods, Soldier of Fortune. I forget. Is this a 12-inch single? I think it's a single. And I think this is kind of sample-like. I know it's good, though. Besides the cover, this is good. Mm -hmm. 
So folks, continue to be, well, learn how to be your own best friend. This is the other thing is that a lot of people don't, you know, if you don't like yourself, how the fuck is anybody else going to like you if you don't like yourself? If you haven't noticed, that's the problem. Getting along with others, if you don't approve of yourself, if you don't value yourself, how can anyone reflect anything back to you to get through that? That was one of the things that as I struggled with depression in my late teens going into my 20s and doing a lot of substance abuse back then, I was abusing things, escaping, doing everything. As, and I was also working in the mental health field, you know, at the same time, like a lot of people, you know, we're all broken. This idea that of perfect people doing what they're supposed to do, that's bullshit. Anyway, on my journey, and I'm still on my journey, the thing that I can t continue to keep learning is the problem isn't the world. Well, there's problems in the world, but what I can fix if anything, is my gaze, is is my perspective, how I'm taking it in, how I see myself, how I see others, what my value set is. And it's still a work in progress. I'm happy to say that it works to be more in the moment, more present, and, and to just chill out and be okay with yourself. Stop chasing um, desire. We all have desire. Desire, it's, it's the, one of the greatest um, uh, statements out of Buddhism. Desire is the cause of all suffering. It is. It's not that desire is bad. It's, the what, it's what happens to us because of our desires and losing our sense of, you know what I'm, think about it. Not everything that we desire is good for us. We don't necessarily need the things that we desire. Desire is not necessarily a good focus. It's part of the picture though. But that's where a big problem comes in for a lot of us. The things that we desire. It's why the planet is in such bad shape, because of materialism, because we desire to possess, as opposed to realizing that we are divine, and if we could just figure that out and share, we'd be much better off. Okay, that's enough today. Talk to you.